Hi guys, Sarah Fuller here with Easy Adapted PE. Today I'm going to talk about three simple basketball adaptation stations. Before I get into that, feel free to subscribe, ring the bell, all the things, and I will keep making these videos. So the first adaptation that I use is for my students with maybe low mobility, students in walkers or wheelchairs. I'm gonna use a bowling ramp, try to drew, love this thing. I'm gonna put a hula hoop on the floor and the student pushes the ball down the ramp into the hoop. So the hoop is like their basket. So for kids who can't lift the ball, this is a great little piece for them to be independent, but also participating with the rest of the class. You can have three hula hoops on the floor and give the hula hoops point values. So if they give it in the first one, it's one point, two points, three points, and so on. The next adaptation that I use is I will take three hula hoops together and actually put it over the basketball hoop that's in our gymnasium. So at that point, students that are mobile, that have that mobility, are able to shoot at baskets of varying levels. The piece that I have, this is a um, more pricier piece of equipment, but it's an actual basketball hoop and it hangs. So we've added a hula hoop to it so that it sits again right over the basketball hoop that is our regular one in the gym, kind of hangs over it. This is nice, it swings a little, so you can make it a little bit more challenging for kiddos. Really nice piece of equipment, if you can afford that, that's a great, uh, great thing to have. The third thing that I'll do is I'll go, go to Dollar Tree and I'll get one of those balloons that's blown up. And on the end of the balloon is, um, typically there's a rubber band or something that will go over your wrist. Unfortunately, ours broke, so I made one out of a couple rubber bands. Once it's on the student's wrist, they can actually start to bounce the ball back and forth without the ball flying away from them a million times. So the student can feel the ball hitting over and over again. They can kind of get used to the rhythm and the pattern. Now, once you're moving on, you might do playground balls without the string attached to it. You might move on to smaller basketballs, bigger basketballs. Um, something that I also like to do for students and walkers in wheelchairs is I'll do a little makeshift net, if you will, and here in this picture, I've used some Velcro strips and some bungee cords, and so the ball sits right on top of the student's wheelchair or walker, and the student can move around the gym, maybe putting one hand on the ball, and then once they get to where they're supposed to be, so let's say you're doing a station that's passing, the student can actually move and hold the ball, get to that poly spot, and then push the ball off of the little net so that they're actually pushing the ball towards that student and participating and passing. You know, if you have a student in a, a wheelchair, you can try this. You can also just have it on their lap. You can have a basket sitting on their lap. Um, there's lots of different ways that you can adapt. Those are my three basketball stations. Sometimes what I like to do is create obstacle stations. So what that means is I will set up those three basketball stations throughout my gymnasium. And in between each station, I will add an obstacle. So for example, we'd have the shooting station where the bowling ramp is, and then there's gonna be like a balance beam. Maybe we have a curvy pathway that the kids need to navigate around. The next, then the next station will be there. So that next station might be the dribbling station. The student will dribble maybe 10 times, and then they will go through a tunnel or they will go underneath um, these, we have these hula hoops that have things hanging from them. The students can actually go underneath, cut the hula hoops in half and put them in cones. Um, so maybe they'll go underneath those and then they'll get to the next basketball station. So for students, again, that have really high mobility and want to be moving around, that's a great piece for them. And even students with low mobility, it's very engaging, it keeps them movement, moving and it shows them what's next. At each one of these stations, you're gonna want visuals. You're gonna to wanna to be able to tell the student how many they need to accomplish before they can move on to the next thing. This is very helpful, especially for students with autism spectrum disorder who really like those definitive pieces, letting them know we're going to dribble 10 times and then you're done and you can go underneath the bridge. That's all I have today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave below. If you want to, feel free to subscribe and I will keep making more videos. Bye.